believe it or not, I still can't get enough of the ethereal world building and remorseless Nazi annihilation in Wolfenstein 2. The Freedom Chronicles DLC shines on with the introduction of Jessica Valiant, otherwise known as Agent Silent Death, among those who fear the sharp end of her bloodstained blade. Though I blew through the story in a mere hour, I was left with a sizable helping of satisfaction and excitement for the future of her character. Jessica Valiant's tale progresses the trend of splendid world building set by Gunslinger Joe in part one. Her story boils down to a good old fashioned revenge flick, but her mission of exacting that vengeance upon her enemies is one of style and intrigue. Jessica once worked alongside OSA secret agent Jack Valiant, her husband and spy for the British Empire. Romantically and professionally, the two were inseparable until a fateful day in 1946. During a mission gone sideways, Jack buys Jessica time to escape while he's taken into Nazi custody. As time passes by, Jessica drowns her sorrows in copious servings of liquor on the beaches of Brazil. That is until she receives a letter from the Crimson Bulldog, detailing three targets tied to the death of her husband. Hollywood Nazi collaborator Chuck Lorenz, the once OSA operative who betrayed Jack, Uber Commander Hans Stiglitz, his torturer, and the vile General Gerhard Dunkel, his murderer, all have to die. With mission in hand, it was time for Agent Silent Death to pay a visit to the American West. To quote Miss Valiant, at this point killing Nazis is like riding a bike. That statement rings true throughout the course of part two. Seeing as Jessica is infamous for assassination, stealth is obviously encouraged. Thankfully for my sake, that's exactly how I prefer to play the game. I enjoy a run and gun bloodbath from time to time, but when any game provides me with an opportunity to stealthily approach my enemies, I'm gonna take it. Equipped with a silenced pistol and the ability to slip underneath tight spaces, silently silencing Nazis is as enjoyable as ever. I'd had my fair share of stealthy experiences in the main game, so I managed to complete part two entirely undetected. Aside from the locations you visit, there's nothing new here aside from a gnarly animation Jessica performs when taking out Nazis from underneath tables. You encounter the same versions of enemies you've killed a thousand times before and discover weapon upgrades and collectibles along the way. Naturally, the world building is complemented by documents you can read throughout each mission. The pieces in part two are particularly interesting, as you infiltrate a Nazi-occupied movie studio in Hollywood and revisit the moon in the conclusion. With the exception of the moon, which is essentially a chunk of Venus with altered color and lighting, I thoroughly enjoyed exploring the areas of each mission, especially Paragon Film Studios in Los Angeles. Within it, you see various sound stages dressed for a multitude of Nazi propaganda films, one of which features a downed fighter plane from World War II. It was a unique setting to tread as I ended Nazis with a silent treatment. Stabbing the cowardly Chuck Lorenz was as gratifying as blasting that bastard dentist from part one. Everybody hates a Nazi sympathizer. The Gestapo office in the first mission isn't anything you haven't seen before, but I enjoyed popping skulls while Uber Commander Hans Stiglitz demanded a ham sandwich over the intercom while I was at it. A dozen or so headshots later, I gave that son of a b my own version of a ham sandwich. Valiant's story concludes on the moon as she seeks her final target, General Dunkel. Again, the setting feels all too familiar, but the dialogue shared among Nazi soldiers as you sneak about is quite delightful. Coincidentally, you visit the lunar base on the anniversary of BJ's rampage from the first game. Soldiers speak of their brothers lost in the tragedy, and offhandedly mention the deaths of your previous targets. Not unlike Terror Billy himself, the legend of Agent Silent Death strikes crippling fear into the Reich. A somewhat unique aspect of Valiant's character in terms of gameplay is her limit of 40 armor. In the narrative, Valiant equips a limited amount of armor in an effort to remain silent as she stalks her prey. Considering Agent Silent Death is a legendary assassin, I believe her character would have greatly benefited with the addition of a signature weapon. I like the traditional silent pistol and the extended mag upgrade you acquire is appreciated, but I would have loved to have a specialized version of it. Specifically, the addition of an optic and perhaps an original design in terms of construction and color scheme could have provided a fresher gameplay experience. I also wouldn't have minded a twist or two in the narrative. However, Agent Silent Death's vengeful escapade in the Freedom Chronicles DLC is a fun one, especially for fans of stealth. I admire Jessica Valiant as a character and look forward to her future with the American Resistance and the inevitable Wolfenstein 3. If you've played Chapter 2 of the Freedom Chronicles DLC, let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to COD Connected for all things gaming, and for news, reviews, features, and more, visit us online at codconnected.com.